Hi, my name is Mark Hundley, and this is a special Saturday edition of Live at 5. It just happens to be 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Central Daylight Time, uh, on the 5th of August. So there, it's kind of a, a Live at, at 5 on the 5th. So I, I appreciate you joining in with me and, and being a part of this. Uh, I think I told you yesterday and, and maybe even today in a post on Facebook that some weeks just aren't set aside or set up um, to do a Live at Five, and this past week was indeed one of those. And so if, if you have a chance to see this live, which many of you won't, uh, I, I'm hopeful in, in the United States you guys are, are a part of, uh, of Labor Day weekend. So maybe you're out taking a little trip, taking a, having a picnic with your family, doing something safe and, uh, and relaxing uh, along the way. Um, uh, this is a, a, a unique weekend, and I'm hopeful that, that you're, you're having a chance to uh, uh, relax and, and have a good time. It's, it's interesting. I, I was thinking I, I wanted to go a couple of ways with this today, and I didn't really know until about about an hour and a half ago which direction I would actually go. And, um, and, and you may have noticed the title, and, and certainly my titles are, are not intended ever to be offensive to anyone, and so if this title is offensive, it was certainly not my intention. But the title of, of today's little session is To Hell With Loss. To hell with loss, and, and you say, "Well, gee, Mark, uh, that's kind of kind of nice, or, or not so nice. What what is that about? What are you what are you uh, being ugly and mean and saying such rude things?" And there's a there's a reason behind it. So let me share this. Um, I've been working in the field of grief for thirty some odd years now, uh, in lots of different arenas, in school settings, university settings, counseling settings, uh, counsel program settings settings with, with places of worship, with corporations, with uh, funeral homes, uh, all kinds of, of uh, settings where I've, I've worked with folks and, and spoken with folks and trained folks in, in the areas of loss and, and grief. There was one particular experience that I had that was so unique that it has stuck with me for years. It was probably a month or so after 9-11, and um, I got a call from Collin College in Plano asking if I would mind being part of a panel that was going to be, a, they were going to hold a, a community session to talk about all of the issues that 9-11 had, uh, had surfaced in the community, uh, the, the social, the emotional, the relational issues that occurred in the aftermath of 9-11, the spiritual issues, the, the governance issues. Um, the, and when I say social, I'm talking about social slash religious issues that popped up in the aftermath of that. And I, I thought that was interesting. I, I was eager to be a part of that. And uh, the, more I, the more I prepared for that evening, and I went to a, a great deal of effort to prepare for that evening. And did a lot of study, did a lot of reading, made sure that my my thoughts and my comments and my notes were in order. And the closer I got to it, I said, you know what? I'm probably, I'm probably going to be able to say everything that I need to say or I want to say in my introduction, introducing myself. Because my guess is that the last thing that the people who come to that session will want to hear is about loss and grief. And I was right. Uh, on that panel, I believe, if I remember correctly, there were two uh, re religious faith leaders, one from one uh, a Muslim imam and a Christian pastor. There was uh, a, an expert on uh, Middle East uh, culture, and there was an FBI counterterrorism expert, and then there was the bald-headed grief guy. And um, it was fascinating because I did have about five minutes, and that was really all that I had. And in that five minutes, I spoke about the need and necessity to pause and take time and absorb the weight of what had happened, not just to the individuals in New York, but our entire country and our entire world. Every aspect of our culture, every aspect of our relationships, every aspect of our religion. And I remember that I said, it's really going to be really important for us to, to take the time to grieve and mourn before we act. 
No one asked any questions. No one came up to me afterwards to ask what I meant. No one on the panel engaged in, in my thoughts. But I wasn't, that wasn't a foreign experience to me. So very often, so very often in all the years that I've worked in this field, I've had people who say, I've got this. I've got this. I don't need to hear what you have to say. I've got this. We are in the middle of perhaps, not in addition to, and I'll, I'll back up, in addition to the normal losses that we experience every single day of our lives, we are experiencing massive losses uh, in, across the world relating to uh, loss of purpose, loss of meaning, loss of job, loss of security, uh, loss of connections, loss of a sense of safety. The losses just go on and on and on. We have a loss of connection with others. We feel isolated and alone. And, and really, when, when I, the, the reason I named this, this session To Hell With Loss is because that's what we want to do with loss. We really want to just send it to hell, just to hell with loss and get it out of the way because it's just too burdensome. It's too cumbersome. I have no time. I've got this. I can handle this. Leave me alone. Very often, we, we forget that loss can be defined as the absence of, the removal of, uh, the deprivation of anything that's of value to us, and so many things we've lost that are of value to us. When we lose, we grieve. It's a reactive process that, that hits us mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and relationally. It just hits us and grabs us and takes us on a ride that is not fun. Um, it's distressing. It's confusing. It's maddening. It's depressing. And those losses that we experience, we experience those things mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, relationally. And, and frankly, it, it's just, it just takes so much energy to acknowledge the grief that comes with those losses. It just does. And so what we have a tendency to do is to allow those reactions to become our primary coping mechanism. So we, we uh, compartmentalize and, and we relabel um, or are we, we tend to, to deaden the pain, deaden the fear, deaden the uncertainty. And so we take a pill, we pop a pill, or we take a drink, or we become involved with, with kinds of activities that tend to numb our ability to acknowledge what's going on. Because embracing the pain of loss by acknowledging the reactions that we have is difficult. So we fail to move toward that, that mourning part, that mourning part that, that where we begin to make amends, we begin to ask questions, we begin to do some soul searching, we begin to reach out to people, we begin to reach within ourselves, we begin to go to therapy and read books and practice yoga, we begin to run and exercise and ask those tough questions of ourselves. So often we want to move on uh, with the same uh, set of, of uh, clothes in our suitcase that we had before the loss. And we just want to go on thinking that everything is going to be okay down the road. We have to stop sometimes. Unpack that suitcase. Find some different clothing. Find some different attire to move forward towards something else. So often we run away from that which hurts us, that which, that which scares us, that which distresses us, that which, which causes us to to feel pain and uncertainty, to, to question our faith, to question our friends, to question our connections. Embracing it is tough, but we have to embrace, we have to acknowledge the pain that comes with loss so that we can get to the, the mourning part, the doing something, the meaning making. You see, meaning within this process of, of, of dealing with loss is all about finding ways to, to mourn in healthy, meaningful, positive ways. I'm fearful. I'm fearful for our nation, for our world, that unless we really do take the time to start looking at our losses in ways that challenge us to embrace the pain, but then do more, move in positive ways to make sense, to make connection rather than disconnection with others, with ourselves. I often say that we have to do three things when we learn to mourn or when we work at mourning our losses. We have to reach up 
We have to reach up to, to those things, and perhaps it's God. Perhaps it's God in your life. But we have to reach up with our faith to those, those values, those relationships that are, that are higher, bigger, more meaningful and powerful than we are, to, to tap into the opportunity to create some sort of meaning. We have to learn to reach out, folks. We need to do more of that. But it's kind of hard, isn't it, right now with COVID, to reach out? We have to do this. We have to do eyeball to eyeball on a video screen. But we have to learn to reach out to others. We, we have to recognize in reaching out that we are more alike than we are different. We all have hopes and fears and dreams. We all have directions. We all have, have things that we want to accomplish, things that we want to avoid. And we do that best when we're working together rather than against each other then we have to reach in. We have to tap that personal resiliency and that strength and that resolve that says, you know, this is tough, this is hard, this is uncertain, and I'm not sure what's ahead of me, but I'm going to do everything I can to pay attention to my thoughts, my feelings, my relationships, and I'm going to do everything I can to connect with people and do the right thing, be the right thing, be that grace, be that mercy. Be that positive influence. So, hey, here it is, a, a hot, in most places, a hot August afternoon. We're all in the middle of loss. We would love to say to hell with loss, just to hell with it and let's walk away. But we can't. We have to learn to reconcile. And that's, and that's taking what I thought I had in life. And through all of the adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing that are, that are part of the mourning process, making sense so that I can move forward with purpose and resolve and connect with those things that are greater than me, that are similar to me, and that are within me. I wish you a good weekend. For those in the United States, happy Labor Day. Have a good long weekend. I'll look to see you one day next week. I'm not sure. But take care of yourselves. Peace.